Hello, this is Dr. Greg Godwin, Fair State University. In this video, what we're going to do is take a design that we created in Visio and put it into SQL Server. And we have already created this design and we have the data types now showing. If you have a question on how to get the data types to show, uh, you can select the table, but you have to have it where you have all these little balls on it. Then you do a right click and show attributes and you can toggle it on and off. If you if you don't have the uh, selection that shows the balls in the corner, you don't see that attribute. So it's a little bit of a tricky thing in Visio, the version that we are using. Uh, we're going to assume this design is good to go. There are a few minor challenges with the design, but down the road we want to learn limitations by running into them rather than just talk about them. And in particular, one little challenge we might see is in the ratings table with some of the naming. Uh, just one example. But we're using varchars and ints and chars for the most part. Uh, for the movie table, we have a release date where the data type is date. Now, the date data type for SQL Server starts basically 1101. So, in other words, January 1st, the uh, year 1 AD, so basically when Jesus was born. Uh, the integer data type is one that is a range of values, uh, roughly from a negative 2 billion, 100 million to a positive 2 billion, 100 million. And there's other data types that are ints that we can use in SQL Server, including tiny ints and big ints and so forth. But we're just going to go with some defaults and some common ones for now. Um, Primarily using varchars, which is very common in Oracle, the varchar2 data type. Uh, but in the rating table, we're going to use chars so that once we get into some SQL and such, we may be able to see a slight difference in how things are handled. So with that, we're going to take this design and move it into SQL Server. And one thing I want to emphasize, the way I like to design a table when you have a uh, like a movie, in an actor and you have a situation where an actor can be in many movies and a movie can have many actors you have a many-to-many -many that has to be resolved and we call this table in the middle a bridge table and I like to have the names of the two tables that it resolves as the name of that bridge table as long along with the data types for uh, and the keys being named the exact same as they were in the original table. So in other words, movie, movie ID, and the movie actor table, it is movie ID, and they're both ints. Okay, with that, let's move it into SQL Server. So I'm gonna to go to a side-by-side -side screen, and I have SQL Server up. I do have a, an existing movies database with some of the tables, and we're gonna use that because I don't wanna have you watch me type them all. But I've got three more that have to be added. So I thought if we go through it three times, then you'll be pretty comfortable how to do it. Now, like I said, the movies database is already created. If you want to create a database, just go up to the database, do a right click, new database, and give it a name. So we'll call this one, uh, we'll just call it movie test. And take the defaults for everything and you can see we now have a movie test database that we could open up with the twisty. Uh, there are no tables in it. With the movies database, I already mentioned I have created some of the tables that are in the database to di design diagram, but I have not done genre, movie genre, or rating. So let's do that. Let's add those tables really quick and talk about the data types and such as we do that rather than just import some SQL and run it. So if you click on the movie with a right click, you see several different options. Uh, including some tasks and so forth where you might want to bring in some data. But what we, want to, what we want to do is create some tables. So we'll just right click on the table uh, folder, new table, and it'll pop up with a design view. We're going to create this genre table. And it starts out with a genre ID. So we'll put genre ID. 
the data type is an integer so if I just type IN it'll automatically default to integer but you can see these are the data types that are available uh, so you can see like the big int that we talked about there's a tiny int uh, and so forth but we're going to going to default and use the int simply because it's a very commonly used data type it certainly has more capacity than we need uh, but we're going to use that anyway by capacity I mean the int ranges from negative 2 billion to positive 2 million and the number of genres we're going to talk about is very small so a tiny int would do it but we'll worry about that at another time if we want to refine our database allow no no it's going to be a key field so we're going to require it so let's go to the genre name and that by default is an nchar 10 if you look at what we have over here it's an nvarchar 20 so we can go to the varchars the default value is a 50 but we only want a 20 so we just click there and make it a 20 the name is required, so don't allow no. No means nothing, not no. Um, then we'll do the description, genre description, and that we have an nvarchar max. And max means it's the maximum, up to the maximum amount of uh, space positions that can be used based on SQL Server's version. So in other words, the max that's allowed in version 2017 might be different than the amount that's the maximum allowed in a future version. And this allows you to uh, easily migrate and take advantage of new, new enhancements. Uh, we're gonna say that the uh, genre is required and so we're not gonna allow nulls. Now, this bit about allowing nulls and so forth is not obvious in the database diagram and so we're going to uh, add that little bit as we as we talk about our design as we're implementing it. Notice the primary key is genre ID that's what the PK is so everything above this line in Visio is our primary key. To set a primary key we do a right click and set primary key and we're done we only had three fields. We go to save it, so we go to close. Do you want to save it? Yes. Give it a name. Our name is genre. Now you don't instantly see it uh, in tables. You have to do a refresh. So I do a right click, refresh, and then it'll show up. And you can open it up with the twisties down at the columns and you can see what we created. You can also do a right click, design, and be right back to where we were. So perhaps you needed to correct the spelling or um, add some more columns or something like that. One thing I want to point out is um, coming up here in the next table that we have to create, which is the movie genre. So right click on tables, new table, and there are only two fields, movie ID, which is an int, and it's going to be required and genre ID is an int and it's also going to be required. Now if you look in the d diagram you can see both fields are above the line so they're both part of the key so it's a compound or a composite key and what some people struggle with initially is how do you do that? So if you right click on that it's that primary key and it's only that key so we'll remove that. What you have to do is simply shift click get them both highlighted and then set the primary key and then you have a compound key. So we're good with this table. Yes, let's save it as the movie genre. And if you want to see it, you do a right click, refresh, and there it is. And you can see the columns that we created. They're both keys. PK for primary key. We have one more to do and then we're done creating our database in SQL Server. New table. We're going to do this rating table. Now that's not the, that's the name of the table not the field. So let's call it rating ID. It's an int. It 
It's going to be the key. If you allow null, that means the field does not have to be filled in. Well, you always want to have a key on your uh, records, so by default that has to be required. Then we have the rating, and that we're going to use a char 5. And we'll require that because why would you have just a key with no, no values? And then we're going to have a description. And the description we'll have is a char 50. Now the N in front of it means Unicode. That's the double byte character set. We're just going to use uh, char for now and a 50. Remember the Unicode is allows better international applications like uh, languages such as Japanese and stuff. It's a lot easier to store in there. And notice description has these brackets around it. D-E-S-C. That's because it's a reserved word. And I mentioned in the diagram that that was not a good uh, maybe the design in this diagram isn't the best. Uh, I, I just want to live with this sin just for a little while to help reinforce some of these challenges uh, when we start to uh, write some SQL and so forth. So we're going to go with it um, and we'll see what happens down the road. And this is our rating table. Okay, if we do a right click on tables, refresh, we can see we have all seven tables, which is this entire database design that we just talked about. So there we go. We'll go on to the next step in another video. And hope you found this useful. You can always rewatch portions of it. Talk to you soon.